At that time, I was smoking half a pack of cigarettes. I was severely dependent on my ADHD medicine, which I was buying off the streets because I was taking so much of it. I was hyper addictive to Xanax, which I was also buying off the streets and taking every single day. My life was a complete mess. I was at the University of Michigan, right? Every day there's freaking smart. Everybody's getting perfect SAT scores, awesome ACT scores, 4.0 GPAs, Valley Victorians. And then there's Adam Wetica, right? Just like this guy from Lake Orion, Michigan. And I felt stupid. I felt terrible. I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. All right, runners, 30 seconds. Races. See you at the end. Three, two, one. Have a great time today. Enjoy this beautiful course and the great weather. What's cool about this trail is it's 10,000 feet of ele elevation gain and drop over the course of you know the 100 miles. So it's nuts. It's all on back road ATV type of you know dirt roads, and obviously it's that classic Moab like red dirt. Um, there's a little bit of like I'm gonna call them cliffs, but there's drop off points that you will have to like not rappel down, but you know basically turn around and jump off. So um, most of it's gonna be backcountry, pretty remote location. So it should be interesting. Okay, that feels better. The level of clarity and calm I feel when I'm done running is like nothing else, especially running in Utah. You're looking at mountains. It's crisp outside. The sun's just getting up. You're up before everybody else. You feel like you've got a jump start to your day. When I go for a run, I'm a better person when I come back from my runs, right? I'll see you guys on the other side. Mile 52, it's gonna be dark. Tim's gonna be here. <laughs> Go get him, babe. I have more clarity. Uh, I'm more focused. I have time to process my thoughts, my emotions. I'm coming to the day already having done something that allows me to then be present for everything else. So if it was like, if you could bottle this thing up into a pill and give it to people, people, it would fly off the shelves. It'd be better than Viagra. I guarantee it, it would sell better. <laughs> When I think about running, what I'm doing is I'm going as quickly as possible to a place that feels uncomfortable for me, and that's when the run starts. When my legs start to throb, when I start doubting whether I'm gonna make this uphill or not. That's when I get into, you know, what one of my favorite ultra runners, Courtney DeWalter says, is like the pain cave. So once you get to the pain cave, that's where it all starts. And then you start excavating, you put your hard hat on, and that's where the work begins. And so for me, that's what I was looking for in running. And that's the most exciting part for me is, I know the first 26 miles tomorrow are gonna be fun. They're gonna be easy. I'm not gonna be worried about that. It's when I hit mile 52 and my legs feel like glass and every toe in my body hurts and I'm looking for reinforcements and I just wanna quit. That's when the run begins. And that's what I'm most excited about. Because when I come back after that fourth loop tomorrow, I undoubtedly know that I'm gonna be different. And that's what gets me excited. And what I would hope to do is get somebody else excited about something like that in their life. The beautiful thing about getting out of your comfort zone is not necessarily that it's hard, but because you learn things about yourself and you see yourself in a different way that you couldn't have unless you did that thing. And so as much as we want to say like do hard things, I think an even better message is just get uncomfortable, expand the, re like the reach of your comfort. I was a chubby schmuck who smoked a half a pack of cigarettes. Literally, like I'm the most, normal person, you know, in a lot of that sense when it comes to mental discipline. I really do like feel strongly about the fact that the only reason I'm at 100 miles is because I ran around the block and anybody can do that. All I visualize in the morning is me crossing that finish line 
and what I'm hoping to get when I cross that is just being proud of myself, you know? That's all I want, is to be proud of the way I showed up. Even if I don't finish tomorrow, it's being proud of the fact that I showed up, I put the time in, and see what I'm made out of. All of this pales in comparison to the emotional aspect of what it means to have people around you that love and support you, even when that's difficult to do yourself. It is about the team, and that's been the biggest blessing I've ever had in my life is people who support me. So I think the biggest mistake was I went really hard in the very first lap, and by the end of the first lap, my left knee had already started tensing up and I could feel it throbbing. And so I did the second marathon basically using poles as like levers to get me through, you know, the second lap. And I started feeling really good after the second lap because I knew Tim was coming in, my pacer. I knew he was going to pick me up. I knew we were going through the night. Like that would be the most difficult part. What I didn't anticipate was how cold it was going to be after it poured, right? So it rained for a good amount of time. It got to like 27 or 25 degrees. I don't know what it was. So it was freezing outside. And it was at that point where my right hip flexor had just completely seized up. My left knee was no longer working and we had to do another 5,000 feet of climbing where I was like, this might be bad. Like I might not finish, you know? And once like the delirium set in, like I was talking to rocks, I was seeing things that wasn't there. Like we got lost a couple of times. I think I knew at that point it was probably unsafe to keep going, but also I did not think my body was gonna be able to hold on for another 26 miles. It was pretty crazy. And that was the thing that I think got me the most, was I was not ready for the conditions of the climb, the wetness, the darkness. Um, and that's just something I don't think I could have trained for. You know, That was something that race day was gonna come and you'd have to figure out, but um, it was an adventure for sure. The 100 mile race was a container for me to figure out how far I could actually go. And despite the fact that there was a goal in mind, what I ended up coming to was pushing myself beyond a point that I did not think was possible. When I think about what I did in that race, I put one foot in front of the other. And the question I kept coming back to was, can I take one more step? And the answer was obviously yes. I took one more step until they told me that I could not go anymore because I didn't reach the time cutoff. And in my mind, it was that one step mentality that helped me get to the point where I went an extra 40 miles that I did not think is possible. So when I think about the small thing of consistency compounding, despite the fact that I did not get 100 miles in this race, what I did was blow the lid off the governor that I thought I had inside of me of what was possible. And so now when I show up in my day-to-day -day life, I'm no longer apprehensive towards doing the dishes when I've had a really long day of work. I know I can take one more step. I'm not worried about going for an extra mile run in my training plan because I know that I've done so much before that that now seems easier. The ceiling to what I thought was possible for my life has been expanded where that one more consistent step in a previous life might have felt like a big burden, now it feels like just a part of what I'm capable of doing to then continue to expand the lid on what I think is possible. I really do believe that if I had hit this 100 mile mark, I would have missed out on the biggest lesson that I possibly could have learned during this race, which is when you fail, you have opportunities to look at where you could have done better. And for me, the biggest thing I picked up on this race was being humble to the fact that big goals are big for a reason and it's because they take a lot of effort. I'm gonna give myself some time to rest, some time to build my body back, but, um, I'll be running again in three weeks, I already know it. You know, I'll be back training again for something in the, in the summer. So um, I'm looking forward to getting back after for sure.